Hi, welcome. <laughs> I hope you are having a fantastic Monday and just moving through that beautiful Saturn Direct and lovely Capricorn moon. So thank you for joining me. Um, what's been coming, what I've I've been receiving for everyone today is this whole, I want to say medicine or um, this energetic weaving, okay, we'll say it like that, of creativity, of um, spider. <laughs> uh, I was out in my garden today and I saw this ginormous web it was it was so big hi thank you this huge web and it was beautiful and it had this geometrical pattern that was very much in the spiral shape right and in the center of the web making her way beginning to make her way um, up the web was this spider really this big with her legs folded in and as she unfolded her legs and began crawling up the web she was really large and so I took note of that, spider medicine. And in all of the cultures, there's a different type of um, connection to spider, the spider woman and spider. Um, but they all have a similar theme. And so this is what comes up right now. This is what comes up is creativity. Right now we're in our creative place of weaving our web right? What web is it that you want to weave? And, and it's not about catching anything. It's about weaving those gossamer threads that are threads of light that become the patterns and manifest into the patterns of your journey, of your life, your bliss, right? And so, you know, as we, we look at the patterns right now, because the moon is waxing, so it's building in light, or as I like to tell children, she's removing her blanket to shine her light and to illuminate us from within, from without. And so this is what Spider is coming to say. What, what are you weaving right now? What threads do you feel you're caught in that you need to um, clean off? Because the thing about Spider is, you know, she's about balance. Spider medicine is about balance, balancing the past and future balancing masculine feminine energies um, and really also she's about the the illusion what illusions are you allowing yourself to still live in sit in see believe okay and so spider what spiders do is they recreate their webs all the time every moment they are recreating webs so when I say every moment, they are constantly reworking their own web and then they'll destroy their web if they feel like it doesn't work and they create a new web. And when that new web doesn't work for them anymore, they create a new one. And this is where we are. This is what I hear from the angelic realms and the energies is that this is where we are. We're in this place of creation, especially with the waxy moon. Okay. And especially since yesterday's 1010 portal and the new moon and all of this building, all of this letting us know it is time for us to create that web of light. You know, that patterning that we want to bring into manifestation, to let go of the illusions, the webs that are illusions now, to clear the cobwebs, clear them away, clear out that old and start focusing. Okay, so Spider also focuses on what she chooses, right? Lee, great. There we go. <laughs> That's fantastic because spider will show up and it's not, it's not one of those things where we look at a spider and go, Oh, that's great. We need to pay attention to the natural world and place ourselves in that natural world. And a lot of people feel very vulnerable about doing that, but this is what spider also teaches. And when I say medicine, she gives us light. She gives us vibration, color. I mean, they're all one in the same, right? And then she also teaches us these things. So right now, um, you know, spider is also about death and rebirth. Like I was saying, clearing out the old, letting go of the old, 
and rebirthing the new, reweaving your parts of your life or your whole life. And spider takes her time. She focuses and takes her time. Now, most spiders create their webs in a spiral pattern. If you really notice, you know, I mean, they're, they're light, right? They're weavers of light. And so sometimes it's really challenging to see the web that they've created. But if you look in just the right perspective and in just the right light with it shining on there, you'll see it in perfect vision. And this is what she's teaching us too, is shift your perspective just enough, right? That you can see that light shining on what you're weaving. You can see the light, you can see it right there. And you take that and you create, hold the vision, hold the light. And where do we really, really hold that from? Our heart, because spider is in the center of her web. That's where she is queen of her web, right in that center. And that's where we are too, where we, we connect with the entire natural world. The, we become that tree of life where we're the bridge of um, the celestial realms and the earth and help bring in that light, bring in that healing, bring in that vision, right? For ourselves personally and the world, right? That's what you are here for is this, this lifting of light, creating of light and happiness, joy. And even if you're not feeling that right now, focus on what do you want to feel? What do you want to weave? So as I was standing in the garden, <laughs> I, my son asked me, why do I feel chills when I see that spider? <laughs> I said, me too. And immediately the answer came to me because I get chills personally, and I don't know about you, I'd love to know. I get chills when something's right, when I receive a download or an infusion of light and vibration. And so the spider gives off light. See, she's giving off medicine, that vibration, and light is vibration. And so when we kind of get the chills a little bit, we're receiving her medicine, we're receiving her teaching. And so if anything gives you chills, then know that you're receiving that information, that light, that resonance, that, that field of vitality, that's what I hear. So Spider, if we, if we look at her, has this, um, so I'll do it this way, it's an eight, her back is an eight. Okay, and I'm speaking of spider because she is a lunar symbol. So lunar symbol, divine feminine symbol. And we all have this within us. We all need to integrate that divine feminine, that, that lunar, which is the dark, the light within the dark, okay? And the illumination of the dark within, the illumination of the night sky, that velvet sky holding that beautiful silvery light or whatever color it looks to you. Sometimes I see it in this rainbow array. And so this figure eight on her back. So it can be looked at several ways and we would have it this way where it looks like an eight. <laughs> and so you have the above and below, as above, so below, okay? You flip it on its side and it's the infinity symbol. And so there is really no beginning and no end. There is, there is death and rebirth, which is the falling away of releasing the old, letting go, letting go, to bring in the new, to rebirth the new, to reweave the new, okay? And so, you know, these beautiful circles showing us no beginning and no end, but we are so connected to that, that symbol we're connected to all above, all below. And then in the center where it connects is that divine connection, right? The bridge, us, the, our divinity. And so Spider teaches us about balancing the physical and the spiritual as well. You know, balancing our humanness with our, our master weaver, okay? Our master light weaving, our, our divinity. And in doing so, that's honoring them. Honor how you feel, honor your emotions, allow them to flow through you, allow to pay attention to them because they are teaching you, they're healing. Again, no matter how you're feeling, think about spiders. When they bite us, they're getting their, our attention, right? Perhaps we've put our hand into something that we need to take more care of putting our hand into, right? 
perhaps spider is saying, pay attention, you need the poison to have the remedy, right? Okay, so always next to the poison, there's the remedy. And poison really flushes things out. So I'll, I'll say it like that and leave it as such because, you know, we're really, we're thinking about a spider was, was speaking and the energies were coming in. It's really thinking about that weaving of our emotions and our knowingness, like allowing that to, to come up and us say, yes, okay, I feel this way, I honor that. And now what do I need to do with it? Instead of, okay, now I just let it go. What do I need to do with that? All right. Um, so again, we want to be weaving balance right now. We want to look at that. We want to honor it. We want to ask what we need to do with it. And then we want to allow ourselves to connect to that higher place and hold the vision of weaving what we truly desire, weaving what our heart is calling out for. And allowing our heart to expand as we weave that beautiful tapestry of light that is your journey, your personal journey. Because Spider teaches us that, you know, whatever we are weaving, we will experience. We will soon experience. So take a look right now and see what you're weaving. And see what you will soon bring to yourself. Because the web catches, right, those experiences to bring in. So think about that. Um... So with the, the moon cycles, the seasons, and being in nature, it's important for us to notice the moon cycles, to allow ourselves to flow in them, to allow ourselves the ebb and flow, the balance of ebb and flow, because we can't always flow, flow, flow. We, we pour out our cup. We need to ebb, pull back, take a rest. That's the divine feminine, right? And then flow, pour forth, forward action, divine masculine. And so resting is just as important as actioning right now. Um, being loyal to yourself and honoring yourself gives you that much more pouring into to be loyal and honoring all life forms, okay? When we can honor ourselves and connect with the earth, connect in nature, and pay attention to what all of nature is telling us and around us, because you're a part of everything, right? You're part of that web that is woven from the divine. So, a spider also reminds us that um, we weave with our thoughts, our feelings, our actions. And think about, and this is what, Think about what your actions are. Are they true? Are they coming from your heart? Do you really feel that you want to do that? Or are you doing that out of obligation? Um, your thoughts. Your thoughts are pointing through. Sometimes to have them not go in these balls and just swirling around, it's best to journal them out, let them out, write them out. And you know, um, Spider also is, if you're a writer, that's probably one of your totems because spider is about writing and that creativity and, and language, ancient language. Because Chinese, the Chinese had this dragon spider, if you will, um, bring language. This is, this is part of their, their ancient story. And bringing language that was written from the stars. And so spider brought that in for them and that's where the ancient story says the language was created by this spider dragon from the patterns in the stars. Now this makes me think of light language and you know light dance and movement and um, you know all of this. This ancient language is from where we come from. It's you know reaching those vibrations that are open and allow us to bring in that information from the celestial realms, from the angelic realms that are very high vibrating and the star beings that are very high vibrating. And there's uh, another opening coming up where we'll have very clear connections. And I've heard one of those connections is the Arcturian connection with really information coming in, but you can have that now, obviously, and of course all the time, but it's really listening to that, that star language 
to what vibration it is and allowing yourself to take those deep breaths and connect to them, right? So um, I, th I thought that was really, I love that, you know, that their language was created from star patterns, ancient star patterns and ancient star systems is, is how it's been translated basically and told. So it makes me think of star beings has passed on that information. Now, um, we are stars. We are, our celestial body is made up of stars and galaxies and universes. We are the stuff stars are made of. So you'll probably notice that spiders weaving in your dreams during this time, your dreams may be very different with this influx of high vibrating light coming in and a high vibration of energy, you may notice that your dreams have shifted a bit. And so take note of that, journal those down and see the different colors of your dreams, meaning the different layers. They might be different than before because everyone that I've spoken with, um, including my own dreams, have been shifted greatly these last couple of weeks and they continue to shift, meaning there's a different vibration to them. There's a different meaning, like for example, to Rose than there would normally be. So take time to think about that. And if you want to share with me any of your dreams that um, you've been connecting with and that have been coming to you that you might have some questions about, you can email me at awakening at melissavirtue.com. You can also find my website, melissavirtue.com. Uh, I do have some micro dream courses there and a, micro, and a dream course. But it's just interesting to note that your dreams may be telling you and have you may have a lot of animal totems in them and animal medicine is what I call it um, coming through, you know. So yes, this energy of creation through our feelings and our thoughts and our actions. So a lot of people want to sweep their emotions away because they're like, oh, I shouldn't be feeling that way or that, but honoring them. Okay, bring them to you, pull them out because they're ready to be expressed so they can be let go of. You know, that death and rebirth with spider. They're ready to, for that web to be gone, for the illusions to be swept away so you can start weaving your bliss. So what the guides are saying is that it's really time for you. So start focusing on that. Write it down. Write down how you want to, um, what you see in your life, what you want to create in your life, what you want to weave in your life, write it down. You Maybe you want to look at it every day and you want to post it somewhere or maybe you want to take time to awake dream about it. So you daydream is another word for that or just focus on it, visualize it, but keep it open. Keep that web having space because spider doesn't, you know, weave these tight, sometimes knit things. It's, it's open. Now going to that place of creation, right? Um, that we are this feminine creation. We are, we are expressing our feminine divinity right now, okay? Because spider coming in and she's a lunar symbol thinking about um, that spiral that she weaves in. So the spiral to me is many things. I could really talk for hours about the symbolism of spiral, but I'll say this in connection with spider as it is about creation. You hold that vision and you go into the circle as you're weaving into that spiral until you reach center point. Center point is where you connect with the divine. It's that, that axis mundi, okay? And bringing in whatever question or thought or information you wanna bring forward, there it is, right at the heart of it, right at the expansive cosmic heart, right there, okay? Within your heart even, so spiraling inward as you're envisioning what you want and what you want to create what you want to weave with this light. And then as you begin to spiral outward, right? again, bringing that out into the world to manifest. So basically this is as within, so without, right? Now, um, this energy, this creation energy, since it is this, kind of, this feminine, right? Having this time to rest, rest and visualize, rest and focus, rest and allow your mind to flow, let go. So the high vibrations can, can come in from all sources, from all places of light and infuse you, infuse you with that, that 
loving, that loving light expanding your heart so you have the tools to weave with, okay, so to speak. Um, but I'm going to go back here to spider being a guardian of ancient languages. So reminding me, I need to say one more, one more thing about that. So Odin, a Norse, I'll say story or Norse belief system. And if some of you know this, and you can correct me if this isn't correct, but um, from my, my understanding, and the information I received. So Odin hung upside down on the tree. And this is where um, it is said that Odin created the runes, right? And, but let's think about this. Hung upside down on the tree, the tree of life. The tree of life is a channel. It channels the energy from the celestial heavens down through its trunk where there's the middle realm, us, right? This existence down into the earth, down into hollow earth channeling that and connecting that. So it's, it's like a lightning rod, if you will, but for light and, and connection and illumination and grounding to ground it in, okay? Bringing the higher forms in. So it was said that Odin hung from this tree um, for nine days and nine nights. Day, we have divine masculine. Night, we have divine feminine. The resting and the action. And the number nine is a triple trinity, which is a goddess number or a divine feminine number, whatever you connect with when I say that. Um, and so nine and nine added together is 18. One plus eight is nine. <laughs> and then you have the number eight in there. Nine and nine is 18 with the eight spider back, right? Okay, so I get into the numbers. I love it because, you know, they hold vibration as well. Okay, and so to me, and I'll just say this on the very basic level of, of first layer, that the nine days and nine nights is the marriage or the merging of divine feminine and masculine, of understanding that. Odin merged that within, okay? And hanging upside down tells me, is I, I don't really think that Odin hung upside down, perhaps he did, but that tells me that he saw a different perspective and also was going through an initiation, for those of you who understand that bit. And so initiation of expansion of the heart, of raising of kundalini, right? Because we have the snakes connected to trees. And that deep knowledge and wisdom coming to him from the earth energies and the celestial energies and converging at the tree in the, in the middle of the trunk flowing through where Odin was hanging or connecting. So Odin was receiving these energies and it was defined masculine and feminine. And it gave him the language of the stars, right? That ancient language to help people heal, understand, um, bring from within to without because runes are, are, are this, right? Part of our extension of our energy and intuition. Okay, so... <laughs> I just love that Spider came today for that medicine because she holds so much. Hi, Joe. <laughs> she holds so much uh, wisdom, ancient wisdom and medicine for us. So I encourage you to sit with Spider and what Spider means to you and think about those things and think about what you're weaving and how you want to weave with your actions, thoughts, your emotions, right? Um, so, right, <laughs> right, that's true. And so, um, I was just looking in the chat, that is how it's spelled. So, think about, you know, holding your focus, holding that, it's, it's tenacity, okay? It's, it's holding that vibration, and it's okay that if it's not always there, if it's not always constant, because you, when you rest and allow yourself to be, you're not forcing anything. You're allowing it to flow. You're allowing it to um, come to you in ease and grace without forcing, okay? And the tenacity is not allowing anyone to knock you off your vision, not allowing anyone to 
push your buttons in the way of um, you feeling like, well, never mind, or okay, maybe I was wrong. No, your heart is your guide. It always has been and always will be. It is your compass. It is your your source of of bringing in that compassion, that marriage of masculine, feminine, divine love, and connecting with a cosmic heart. And this is really important for you to to move from, speak from, work through your emotions from your heart. Okay, and and again, that goes back to spider's medicine, right in the center, the heart of the web of creation. So, um, I'm going to draw a few cards <laughs> to complete. And if you have any any questions, you can always write me on a jumping card. Let's see what that was. Okay. And if anybody has any last minute comments or questions right now. Oh, thank you, Davina. <laughs> yes, Galway, right? The clatter. <laughs> thank you. Oh, and I'll speak about the clatter um, on my YouTube. If you want to... Um, yeah, I was just, they're talking to me. Okay, so if you want to join me on Thursday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I would love it because I'll continue the energies of the week and the guidance coming in and um, we can talk about, you know, all kinds of things. But yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the, the divine connection with that. So here we go. So red. Now, to me, this card has changed. These, this is my old deck, um, Angel Dreams Oracle Cards, and we are in the process of printing a new one um, with a different back, the original back, and some on some of them, different keywords and a couple of extra keywords, and the original the original um, border. That so I'm really excited about that. I'll let you all know about it. <laughs> and and so red is is going to be a little different. Um, it's still, those of you who have this deck, it still works as is, um, because it's all energy, right? So red is, is kundalini to me, and it's passion. Um, for some people, it can be survival, but to me, survival is the raising of energy, the raising of, of the kundalini, of shakti, of the passion. It's also, you know, that life force energy, okay? And so think about where you where you're putting your passion again it goes back to that focus where are you putting your focus um, are you passionately expressing yourself are you creatively because when i think of life force energy it's creativity just like we were talking about with spider so this whole um what are you creating right now but also physically what are you creating you know your body's going to tell you the body never lies it's it's this beautiful instrument of light uh your temple of light and if you have an ache on your side or, you know, you've been bitten on your foot or if you're like me and you stubbed your toe a while ago or, um, yeah, I have some interesting stories about a couple of years ago. So, but if you, you know, listen to your body, if you have something going on, listen to your body, but also are you painting? Are you writing? Spider really brings in that writing and creativity, that artistic, we are all artistic because we are all creative beings. You are a master. You're a master of light. So, so behave that way. <laughs> so begin creating. If it, even if it's a small project that you start, do it for you. Refill your cup. Okay, here we go. Another card. Two more. They're telling me three today. So, um, oh, okay, yeah. So if you've had a spider bite that's showing up again, like if it's re-irritated or, or if suddenly the scar shows, that to me is alchemy of the body showing us, um, you know, this pay attention to this, you know, where is the bite on your body? Because that will tell you a lot. Um, is the bite a particular shape? Because I had a triangular bite once from a spider and that was, that told me a lot. And if the triangle is pointing up or if it's pointing down, that's the element, right? It's a different element, fire or, um, yeah. <laughs> So, fire. I said fire, and I'm looking at the fire. <laughs> fire, transmutation, purification, just like the spider, you know, transmuting and clearing out the cobwebs, 
purifying your space, purifying your thoughts. What does that mean? It's to look at your emotions, look at your thoughts, get them out, you know, so they're not held in. Get it out, leave it out, okay? So creativity can help us do that. And that's why spider is calling to you, calling to us, is to write it down, write down your bones, write down your thoughts, write down your, you know, whatever. Um, your whatever comes out, write it down, write down your dreams, uh, paint, create with your hands, whatever that may be. Um, so I have one last card. So think about that. So someone is saying that major snake phobia, even the word makes you panic or want to release, right? So, um, snake is about awakening as about rebirth. And I don't know if you guys heard me tell the story, but this last, um, gosh, it's been probably three or four months, three months, but I stepped, I almost stepped on a snake. It was a long black snake. It was probably five feet long. <laughs> it was really long. Um, and I'm not exaggerating because we have some really big snakes around here. And um, it, poor thing, I scared it. As much as I, I was nervous, and I didn't realize it was right there and I placed my foot right next to it. It did this little freak out on me. It was kind of flipping itself back and forth because it couldn't get away from the sandbox in our garden. We have a sandbox and it couldn't get away from it. And, and then it just slithered off as fast as it could ran right underneath our, um, our briars, our briar patch. So thinking about awakening, right? That snake told me, Time to wake up, time to pay attention. You have something to release, you have something to rebirth. This is a cycle. You know, bring in the opening, bring in because, you know, right here is where the snake energy is kundalini rising within us. And we see that also in the caduceus, the snakes intertwining. That also looks like our DNA. Our DNA is restructuring itself. It is realigning, it is awakening. It is being turned on, tuned up. Um, and so is our, our body, our physical bodies. I mean, that, that is part of that. So, <laughs> But also the caduceus has to do with medicine and has to do with um, regeneration, has to do with dream time. So, but you saw, you know, the pharaohs used to wear them in their crowns and they're not the only ones that used to wear snakes. You know, we think about snakes and kundalini rising, right? And I know that someone else and here is thinking about where else snakes arise from us, but but we've seen snakes wrapped around in ancient times. The left side, which is the feminine side, snakes are a feminine symbol, but wrapped around the arm of the high priestesses and the ones of, um, we see Isis with a snake. We see, you know, so many people have snakes and even divine masculine have, they have snakes or the, the masculine high priests. And snake is about awakening. So if you feel that repulsion or that panic, perhaps there's something in your life you're, you're a little panicked about and you always have been, um, it's a common thread of awakening or standing in your power because it's about standing in your power, letting that Kundalini rise because when we allow it to rise, we suddenly begin embodying our master selves and suddenly begin embodying that divine quality and that divine being. So it's powerful, but you may have been told in a past life that it's, um, it's destructive. It's not when we're working from here, our open, expanded heart, our higher heart, right? So that's the first layer I'll say about that with snake. Okay, I'm going to draw my last card here. <laughs> oh, it's, it's powerful. I know there aren't any in Ireland. <laughs> uh, there are no snakes in there. <laughs> But you know what I would do? It, those of you who feel a little panicked about it, here, let's see, someone else said, um, I would envision a snake. I would call forward a snake dream. And I know that that can be panicky for you, but your guides and your highest self will help it be what you need it to be, be the snake medicine you need it to be, okay, in your dream time. And that snake will show you something very important. And it's also will help you awaken to your bliss, your path, your your divine contract that you came in here to complete with this ascension process. Okay, so claustrophobic, 
I'm thinking of small spaces, right? And you know, I'll say this about being claustrophobic. Um, so that can be a lot of things, what I'm hearing. You know, I would say, I used to say, and I still say this, is that claustrophobia is um, likely connected to your, your past lives. And, you know, time is relative. Time is, time is happening simultaneously. So, but for the sake of clarity, your past lives. And so perhaps you were buried alive in a small space. Perhaps you were trapped in a small space in a past life and it created that panic it created that you know um it could be anything with a small space in a past life that that created that patterning of fear and that you couldn't get out you know that you were stuck and so this is brought forward into this lifetime and think about it in in your childhood because i'm picking up on they're telling me something about your childhood being caught in a small space um, also people putting you in a small space is what i would also add to that you know do you feel like that you feel claustrophobic and you're not speaking your truth, you're not reacting from your heart or behaving from your heart? Do you feel like people kind of compress you in or not that they're doing it, but you're allowing them to do it. You're allowing them to make you smaller than you are. And so then you're, you feel like you have a small voice or, you know, you're not able to completely be you and say, I am, you know, and, and have this cobra head, talking about the snake, cobra hood come out. I am or this beautiful unfurling unfolding of wings of the angelic realm, I am, okay, I'm a warrior of love, I'm a warrior of light, or I'm peace and grace, I am, I have a voice that's important, and my thoughts are important, my emotions are important, my vision and my, my skills are important, what I am doing here is important, right? So I'm going to say both of those things about being claustrophobic. And then I could go on about that. But I, I want you to think about that and how that makes you feel. Okay. Um, and so thinking about those small spaces, right, can really, yeah, um, bring back that fear. And it really is about working, as Spider is saying, letting go of those old patterns, those old beliefs, those old past lives that need to come up and face that fear. Um, that need to be, that you need to be told that you are safe. That there's, there's not really, you are the one that protects you. Your heart protects you. You are so safe. And it's safe to speak your truth. It's safe to live who you are. It's safe to shine your light and create what you choose. All right. You're afraid to drive in high speed. Um, not really sure what that might mean. Um, if it's high speed, that is, you're so welcome. If it's high speed, meaning um, past the speed limit, <laughs> or, or if it's just that you go really, really slow and you know, you're not used to driving fast anymore. Um, Here I am still shuffling the cards. I'm going to pull that third card and then say, I do. <laughs> uh, but, right, I'm just listening to them about that, the high speed. Perhaps, perhaps you need to slow down. Perhaps it's yourself saying, just, it's okay to rest. Like we were talking about earlier, it's okay to go slower than everybody else. It's okay not to follow the crowd and how fast you go. You know, because a spider doesn't whiz through making her web and animals don't whiz through that you know and yeah yeah they don't they don't slowing down I just keep hearing slowing down and maybe taking a different path you know and and they're telling me this symbolically taking a different path in your life than you're doing right now okay I'm hearing that for you to um, let go there's some things you need to let go of and some things you need to allow to come in and that may, might be a little challenging we all have a little bit of tricky or challenging things going on with what we need to admit that we need to let go of and time to to move forward but there's no speed here that needs to happen so um yeah i'm gonna pull that third card 
And there was a good point brought up just a minute ago. You know, especially with children, I will say this with dreams right now. Um, you know, maybe I missed part of the conversation or something that was said, but what I think is important is knowing that don't watch anything, read anything, feel anything. You're welcome. Don't watch anything, read anything, look at anything that, that brings you down or that makes you feel, if you can't alchemize it, okay, that's what I'll say. If you feel like that you can't handle it right now, listen to that. Listen to that. Um, but for children especially, we, we are their guardians and they are the children of light. And it's important that we don't feed them scary images, sounds, vibrations, thoughts, and that includes TV, and even if you have your phone out and you're saying, you know, you're showing pictures or your child's looking at, you never know what can pop up. And so, you know, think about that. Think about the images you're intaking, the sounds and thoughts and things like that. And if, you, if you're not able to cut that out because you're in an environment where everybody's doing this, maybe you're at work or wherever you might be, then alchemize it. You know, wash it out of yourself with then high vibrating music, high vibrating thoughts, seeing that that's just illusion, you know, and asking your guides to always be with you, you know, placing the beautiful sphere, not just a, a, you know, flat, but a sphere of the flower of life around you is what I hear. And I see it as golden, the sphere, a big ball sphere of the flower of life. Open your heart chakra, even as, as wide as you can, your high one, and allow it to expand in love and light and touch all of those people that are watching that, hearing that, seeing that. Shine your light. The brighter you shine it, the more you open and expand your heart chakra and feel that compassion, and the more that it, it begins transmuting those things and those environments and those people and, and helping. Okay, so I'm going to finish with that. Did I pull the third card? <laughs> I don't think so. There we go. They're telling me no. Ah, well, there's the third card. <laughs> <laughs> fire again. <laughs> I love it. Exactly what we were just saying. Transmutation with your heart. Purification. Opening and expanding. Compassion. And in that, thank you, beautiful beings of light. I thank you so much for joining me. It's always an honor to connect with you. Again, you can find me at melissavirtue.com, awakening at melissavirtue.com if you want to email me. And I hope to see you on Thursday. 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my YouTube, which is Awakening with Melissa Virtue. Yes. So many blessings. <laughs> Have a wonderful Monday.